Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku, and if you're just joining us, we have been driving and traveling through New Zealand in a small converted van. And we've been driving throughout the country, doing tons of catch and cooks. Uh, right now, we are on the South Island, and we've been here for a few weeks now. We are actually on our way back up north, and we wanted to stop by Kaikura, which is right here behind me. It's supposed to be some epic free diving here, but unfortunately, as you might see, it's terrible conditions. Six to eight foot swells and really windy and just not ideal for anything, anything on the water. And it's forecast to be this way for the next few days. So instead of sticking around here, we're gonna go find somewhere else where we can do some fishing. And I think I found just the spot. I think it's gonna be epic. Let's get going. We're just gonna fill up on some gas and we'll head out of here. It's funny in New Zealand, a lot of these places, you just show up and you pump the gas in first and then you pay later. <laughs> that would never work in the US, I don't think. Unless it was a small town. People just pump and pump and dump, pump and ditch. <laughs> Thanks, man. You too. All right. Now we're ready to hit the road. Let's go. We're going to the, the French Pass. This should be epic. But I really did want to do some free diving in Kaikura. But uh, that's all right. We'll get another chance next time, hopefully. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just stalled out because I'm trying to one hand record and drive a stick. places are always at the end of a gravel road. That's basically scientific data. Proven fact. We'll prove, we'll prove it today. <laughs> wow, this is freaking amazing. And I can just see the French Pass here. There's so much current going through it. Oh, man. Whew, all right, we're right there. We're right there. Well, well, we are here. Let's check out our site. Look at that right on the beach. That's money. Well, this is so good. Such an amazing spot. One issue, one issue, one issue. Just uh, when I was looking on the map, I thought I'd be able to walk the shoreline here and fish. But from what I can see now, that's not possible. I think it's currently high tide. Maybe that's why. Maybe during low tide it'll be accessible out that way. Because I was hoping to fish the point. Because um, inside these bays, it's not going to produce much fish, I don't think. So we'll have to maybe do a hike or figure it out. Figure out where we can actually get to some shoreline that we can fish. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Jocelyn's going to make a quick lunch. And uh, I'm going to get my fishing stuff ready and get that going so we can go catch a fish. Today's supposed to be, the wind's supposed to be not too bad. And tomorrow morning supposed to be really good. Uh, but after the morning starts blowing, gets real windy. Uh, that's what the forecast says. So we only, we got a couple chances probably to capitalize on a fish. And I want to catch a kingfish. I'm still on the, on the, on the hunt for the kingies. And uh, I had one incident and I'll tell you a little bit later once we get out there. Chicken parm wrap for you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Look at this. Mmm, I'm so hungry, it looks delicious. 
That's a good wrap. Mozzarella, little tomato sauce, chicken, spinach. Mm, perfect fuel to go do some fishing. Nice and saucy. That's so good. So I talked to my camp neighbor and he did say that you can walk out during low tide uh, to the point over there and fish. So I just have to wait for the tide to go out by a couple hours and then we'll head out there to go fishing. Okay, Jocelyn and I just went out for a little hike kind of around this up and over this hill and I found another way down. So I'm gonna go down that way. It's a bit of a walk. It's maybe an hour or uh, a mile or so and it's up and down, but it's gonna be worth it. A little bit sketchy but we'll get through it. This is sketchy because it's all rocks that just can just crumble. This is the sketchy part, where it's just a cliff, real crumbly. We did it. Oh, we did it. Oh, this is perfect. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Check that out. You. This is it. I'm gonna start over there. Well, we made it down. And since the first week that I've been in New Zealand, I've been chasing these kingfish and I have not been able to land a single one. They've been very difficult for me to find. I fished all over Northland, just so many different spots. I fished uh, probably close to 10 different spots for uh, kingfish and every time I can pretty much catch a kahawai and use that as live bait and use my stick baits and I'm throwing all kinds of stuff at them but haven't been able to get one and I've been fishing here and there in the South Island for some kingfish too and I did have one run in with a kingfish. It was one day that Jocelyn and I decided to go tandem kayaking in Abel Tasman and I was getting my stuff ready the day before and Jocelyn says to me specifically we're not fishing tomorrow we're just going kayaking for fun. So naturally I was like okay well then I'll just bring one rod and a little stick bait on it and I'll just drag it behind me while we're kayaking and won't even know that I'm fishing, right? I was thinking maybe we'll just catch a kawaii and uh, you know, just uh, have just have it there just in case. So I didn't bring anything else on that trip. And that whole entire day, we did about eight miles on the kayak. And in the last half mile, I get a big hit, a big one on the stick bait. There's a small stick bait like this, about three or four inches and check it out it's a good fish man come on let's get it in could be a kingy could be what we've been looking for it's pretty close we almost got him in don't pop off now oh, no, please don't pop off now <laughs> he's trying to he's trying to pop off He's dragging us. He's literally turning us. Oh yeah. That's funny. This is a good fish. Oh snap. Oh! Oh! oh this this gotta be a kingfish. This has to be a kingy. 
it's running like crazy. It's got so much energy. Pretty light line. So can't go too hard on him. A light setup. Drag's already pretty tight too, so I guess just gonna try to tire him out. Oh no, please don't, no, please don't. Please don't. He does those big head shakes every time it's scary. There he is. Yeah, that's a king. That's a good one too. He's right under the boat. Oh, he's wrapping around us. Oh, oh, we got a kingy on. Oh, it's a good one too. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got a net. Oh, oh, I grabbed his tail. Oh. <laughs> I had a hand on his tail, but super slippery and really girthy too. <laughs> I'll have to like get my hand in his gill. Oh, you know what? I do have gloves. I'm going to just try to put my hand in his gills. I'm trying to land big ass kingfish, but no net or gaff. He's not running too far now. He's pretty tired. He's right there. Um, he's right under us. Holy hell. Holy hell. Holy hell. He's ours. He's tired. He's super tired. And he's, the lure is in his mouth all the way. So I think he's cooked pretty well. As long as I can try to grab him somehow. Try to grab his tail again. Try to go for the tail grab again. Yeah. He's not too tired to kick. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try to grab his gills, I guess. I could try to grab a leader and just try to grab his gills. It's not gonna it's not the leader is only 25 pounds, so not gonna support his weight. He's gonna he can break that off he's pretty easily I think. Just let him get really too really tired. Oh my god there's a second one oh. there's three there's three now oh my god holy snap that's insane oh and they're like what are you doing bro to grab him I try to grab his gills and I almost had it too wow that kingfish had to hit on the one day that I was unprepared no gap no net I couldn't believe it and I had light tackle as well so ended up breaking off and I swear I, I keep playing this part in my head where I reached for the gills and it just shook his head snapped off and just went under the kayak i keep playing that part over and over if i would have just been a little bit more forceful more direct and just stuck my hands in the gills and just held on i would have landed that kingfish it was a big fish try to tail grab it a couple times but it was too strong that didn't work oh. <gasps> can't believe that happened that was my one chance that i've had this trip now hopefully I can make something happen right here. And this area 
has a lot of current. It's super high current. It's just flowing. And it's because we're in between this really narrow peninsula and this island in front of us. When the tide changes, the water just rips inside this passage and it just goes real fast. It looks like a river out here. And one thing I know about kingfish, they like a lot of current. And there's deep pockets within this passage and it creates kind of like a vortex or a whirlpool. And I'm, my, my guess is that these some bait, some, you know, just swimming by or getting sucked into these whirlpools, just getting stuck inside this current and the kingfish just pick them off, boom, boom, boom. That's, what, that's my thinking, that's my guess. Incredible place. So I'll cross my fingers that we get one. Uh, we are cl getting close to the bottom of the tide and something interesting I read on the sign up there, the current doesn't change directions at the same time as the tide. It has about an hour delay until the current actually will change directions. So I thought that was kind of interesting and that might play uh, a role, an effect in the fishing too. So we'll find out. We're getting, we're about an hour from peak low tide. So I'm gonna start getting fishing. All I have are stick baits with me today. I got some big ones, I got some smaller ones. Um, I have one, this heavy duty rod. I got a lighter rod too. Let's see if we can make it happen today. All right, check this out. Look at all these mussels, they're pretty big too. I think these are green lip mussels. Um, they're, I mean, some of them are green. Some of them are definitely green. I don't know if that's just from the algae or if it's actually the green lip mussels. Uh, okay, anyways, let's give it a shot. Starting with the big stick bait, pretty big one. There you go, right there. Drag, pretty tight. Oh, shoot. just bad cast. Okay, let's do this. Oh yeah, that's a good cast. All right, nothing on that one. What a picture-perfect place to go fishing. Man, there's been so many awesome spots that I've fished. This has to be one of the top. I expect it to be pretty slow until the tide changes, or maybe this current changes. And to be honest, I don't even know if kingfish are around this area this time of year, but I don't know, all we can do is give it a shot. Okay, while we wait for this tide to change, it's just ripping right now. I'm gonna try this little swim bait in this calmer area, see if we can pick up anything there. Oh, got one, got a fish. Little fish on, oh, came off. Oh, nope, came, still on. What is this little guy? Oh, came off. Oh no, oh, just came off right there. <laughs> oh, what was that? First cast though. And took my whole swim bait off. Hey, took the tail off too. Got me another one. It was pretty small. Let's see what we got. We'll get him on the next one. I got one. Oh no. Just drop it right there. Let it go all the way to the bottom. Pretty deep. Just right in front of me. There we go. Got him. Oh no. Oh come on. There we go. What is this? It's took my freaking tail off. It's only biting the back 
end of the uh, swim bait. See that? There's yeah, a ton of little bites. Just right there. There's no, there's no. Come on, this is a better one. It's better. Ah, oh, it's a blue cod. Ah, oh, blue cod, cool. I've heard these are really good. And that should be a keeper too. Look at that. Cool. People say these are delicious. This looks like a greenling. Take a look at that, sweet. Yeah, I've been wanting to try these. So that's great. We'll keep one. Uh, they have to be 33 centimeters. So we'll just give it a measure. 33 centimeters. What's that? That's probably like 12 inches, I'm gonna guess. 33 centimeters. It's actually kind of big. 13 inches. Oh yeah, this guy is... They measure to the fork here. But he's well over. It's about 38. 38 centimeters or so which would be about 15 inches I will just take him out of his misery and uh, bleed him out thank you so much you're gonna be delicious okay there we go there we go check it out I believe this is a blue cod pretty cool can throw him in the tide pool is oh that's a decent one. Oh, that's a big one oh what is that is that a kingfish no way no way whoa what it's, a, it's big is that a kawa is that a big kawa what is it what the heck is that it's pretty big oh yeah it's a big kawa yeah, yeah, big kahawai. Huge. Probably the biggest kahawai that I have caught. Yeah, that's a big one, dude. Kind of a small kingfish for a second. Look at this. That's a big kahawai. These are good eating too. We did a video on these guys. But uh, I'm gonna let this one go. Because I'm hoping for a big kingfish. Lucky day, we got big kawaii. It's <laughs> a good one. Well, kawaii are here. You know what that means? Kingfish might show up next. Let's do another cast. If I get another kawaii, then I might, I'm going to switch to the stick bait again. I just caught another blue cod. And you can see them why they call it that. Look how blue it is. Beautiful. Really blue right, right there, right on the back. Very cool. Give this guy a release. This is another good one. Little beekeeper. I'm having fun with these little blue cod. <laughs> I got it get on the stick bait again soon let me get one more fish all right it's time to throw the stick bait again see if there's any kingfish around or maybe call why if I hit this as well Out, bird, you're gonna get tangled up in my line. I just saw some little fish just skipping across right there, casting distance. Could be something in the water. 
something chasing him. Oh, something just tried to hit my lure, I think. Come on. Right now we are at the tide change. But remember, the current change doesn't happen for another hour, which is gonna be close to sunset, but might be the perfect time to catch a fish. nothing yet but you know what I see here I see some kinna New Zealand kinna which is a sea urchin and I've been really wanting to taste one so I might do a taste test and a couple more tests all right let's try one check this out that is a kinna. Here we go. Ooh, I've been wanting to try one of these for a while now. Okay, just do the same thing as ours. Too much booty inside. Pretty small. Maybe it's not the right season. Regardless, let's give it a try. Oh, oh yeah, that's so good. <laughs> Pretty briny. Oh, that's so good though. My gosh. Fresh uni is so incredible. Mm. Ooh, hoo -hoo. That one was really sweet. I need a bowl of rice and a full and like 20 of these. Gosh, that's good. So I'm not really feeling confident with this big stick bait. I feel like after I got that hit on the kayak, it was a small stick bait. I feel more confident in something like this, a bit smaller. The only thing is this rod, I only have 25 pound test fluorocarbon line right here. It's pretty light off the rocks. It's possible, but I'm asking for, tr for trouble if I keep using this one. Risk it for the biscuit. Ooh. Oh, I'm on. Fish on. Yeah. It might be a kahawai. Oh, it's a good fish. Decent fish. Can't see it, but it feels pretty heavy. Feels pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it a kingfish? Is it a kingfish? It's a good fish. Okay, light line. We got to play him. Oh, a big kahawai. Dang. Not a kingfish. Just a big kahawai. Dang. Pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> this is... Yeah, they put a good fight. Oh. Shoot, man. Is this a kahawai? Look like it, but... It's really strong. It's hooked weird. Hooked on the chin, I think that's why. Yeah, it's kawaii. Big one. Look at that. That's a solid fish. Solid, solid kawaii. These are pretty big. Current's getting real weird right now. We got current going this way. We got current going that way. And in front of me, it's going that way. <laughs> it's just going in circles. And we got a bunch of logs just drifting this way and that way. It's really annoying. Oh, fish on. 
What is this? Something small. I think that is a small kahawai. And, ooh, it's a pretty one. Got some yellow dots on it. I haven't seen one like that. Dang. I guess I, sh man, I didn't bring a live bait rig this time. So that's why I'm not live baiting. I mean, I have one back at the van, but I was just planning on doing the stick bait. But this would be a perfect size. You get to live, buddy. You get to live. Look at the whirlpool. It's just going around and around. Oh my gosh. The current is crazy. It's like a big, giant circular washing machine. Okay, I'm gonna throw cast right here. Give it maybe 10, 15 more minutes. Call it a night. All right, I think we're gonna call it with this last cast. It's getting a bit dark. No signs of kingfish. Plenty of bait in the water though. Oops, I did another cast. All right, let's go. Oh, I'm gonna call it a night. It's uh, fun fishing regardless of uh, not catching the kingfish. Checked off a new species, the blue cod. Hopefully it's still there, there's birds around. Oh yeah, blue cod's still there, good. Yeah, we'll be back out here again early first thing in the morning try again tomorrow see you then all right guys we are back this morning at the same spot uh let's, let's give it a shot I'm just gonna do uh this little guy first sun hasn't come up yet it's really overcast today a little foggy sunrise is in 10 minutes let's get fishing There's so much bait in front of me right here. See all that? Pretty sure that's all just small fish. They're eating something off the surface. I can't believe there's nothing chasing them. Oh, look at all of them. They just keep busting up. <sighs> well, really cold this morning. Uh, these stick baits don't seem to be working. Yeah, I don't know if it's the right time of year that kingfish may not be running here or I don't know, maybe we just have to try harder uh, I'm gonna switch to a jig try to drop it down deeper see if that uh, gets any bites so much debris in the water today look at this big freaking tree <laughs> it's gonna basically make it impossible to land anything god get back here oh Hawaii that's about it for this morning I've been catching these little wrasses. Yep. It's a little wrasses. I think that's what it is. And look, this bird wants it. This is the same bird from yesterday. <laughs> you can get him. Oh, he got him. Oh, wow. That was fast. Yep. Down the gullet. <laughs> Oh, I'm on, I'm on. Yep, yep, fish on. What is it? Nah, something small. Nah, it's thick. Well, very slow morning. Tide's coming up really fast. I want to collect some of these mussels for lunch today. So let's get to that before the tide comes up too much. Look at that. Most of these are already underwater. There's some good ones on that rock. I don't really want the huge ones anyways. Just some of the... Uh, Maybe like this size. Yeah, these are pretty, pretty good size. Oh, is that oyster on there? <laughs> and I, don't know, I don't know what these things are. Oh, this one's definitely a green lip mussel. This one is pretty, so clean. 
These look so old, but really meaty. Feels meaty. Oh, look at this. It's like a little, there's a whelk. That's pretty cool. Put that guy back. I think that's good enough, a couple handfuls. Water's pretty cold, but screw it, I'm going in. Just wanna see what's under there. Oh God, it's cold. Lasted about 20 minutes in there. No abalone. Hmm. Damn. Hoping for some. Oh, cold. At least I got a towel. I just got back to the van. And yeah, fishing was slow this morning. Couldn't even catch a blue cod. Unfortunately, I was planning to do some, have some fish for for lunch. But uh, we got these mussels at least. I didn't grab too many. Just a, just a few to try out. And Dawson just made me some uh, savory oats that she's been making recently. It's just basically oats with like, she put some kale in there today, an egg, and the chili crisp and some kimchi. It's really good. I'm going to steam up these mussels and I'll just add it into that, the oats. There we go. So that's the oats just with kale, nothing else, just oats and kale. I should have kept the kahawai from earlier so I can smoke it. People have been telling me smoked kahawai is money. So yeah, I should have, should have kept that one earlier, but oh, I'll get another one later. I'm going to try another spot later tonight uh, when, once the tide goes out. Several hours from now, <laughs> it's high tide now, so got some time. All right, let's check out these mussels. Oh, not quite open yet. Thank you very much. Yes, chili Thank you. And of course, kelp chili crisp. It goes so well on here. Honestly, so well on everything. Really good on steak too, if you guys haven't tried that. Make sure to give it a try. Oh. I'll just dump the rest. Okay, let's see if they're done now. Oh yeah, it's opening up. Not all of them, but a few are open. Take out the ones that are open. Ooh, it looks good. Oh, this one's white. Ooh. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice, big, plump mussels. Now just plop this on. Just gonna take out the beard. And plop it on there. Plop it on right there, I guess. Look at this one. This one is white. Doesn't look as good as the other one, but... Oh, there it is. Savory oats 
with fresh mussels. And Jocelyn already ate um, while I was fishing, so it's just me. Break that yolk. Ooh. I love a runny yolk. That's my favorite thing. All right, let's try the mussel. We'll try it with some of this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Hmm. Now that's pretty awesome. It's um actually a lot lighter in flavor than I thought it would be. Really good. It tastes really similar to the ones we have in California too. Pretty much the same, but um, yeah. I, I can't really tell, tell the difference, but really good. There are plenty of things I have yet to check off in New Zealand, so. A lot of more videos coming but i was really hoping this trip was going to be the one i check off a kingfish but couldn't find any again and very elusive for me but you know what i'm gonna keep trying as long as it takes and once i get one it's gonna be that much sweeter all right guys a little change in scenery here uh we are in an airbnb now uh, got to about 20 30 mile an hour wind gusts all of a sudden uh, so that was uh, the day before yesterday so it's been a couple days but I still have the blue cod I want to make sure to cook that on film and uh, taste it on film because I've never had one and people say it's great so let's cook up the blue cod and if it's anything like a ling cod I'm thinking like a beer battered blue cod would be very tasty and along with it, I'm going to make some Korean scallion pancakes as well. So, let's get to it. Go, go like this guy. Oh, do a little honing. No need to do it all fast like Gordon Ramsay. You can just take your time and put it down. Make sure it's stable. Make sure you got the right angle. A little more functional ceramic coning rod, which actually does a little bit of sharpening. Whereas the steel, the steel steel rods, um, they just do a little bit of edge honing, which means it just straightens the edge of the knife. Anyways, let's get to it. Uh, the knife bags and my aprons are available on OutdoorChefLife.com. All handmade. Here's my fish, the blue cod. Pretty cool looking fish, but not very, not very big. I don't know how big they get. I'm sure they get bigger than this. But let's get to the fillet. Should be pretty easy. Very, very basic. Uh, I will go ahead and take the head off first. It's already been scaled and gutted. the head one slice just to cut the skin and now go all the way to the spine lift the meat a little make sure you got it all and kind of right scrape up on the spine just like that and now you can flip it over again same cut just cutting the skin right there and then uh, same thing all the way to the spine. Lift up the meat a little. Make sure you got it all. Scrape up on the spine. Poke your knife all the way through that hole. Hold the tail. Keep the knife pressure down on the bones and just gonna pull it. Just like that. And you should be able to lift the meat. And just slice off. There you go. Pretty simple. I left a little bit of bones right there. That's no big deal. Just take 
that off right there. There's one side, and we'll do the other side. Flip it over. Cut the skin again, do the same thing. All the way to the spine, lift up, go up. This one, I'm just gonna cut it off here a little bit, a little bit quicker. There you go. Not as clean, but lift a little bit there. Should I try some sashimi? Guess might as well. Really good. Mm. Very clean tasting fish. Very clean uh, meat. Very, very translucent and white. Okay. I'll take the rib cage off here as well. Boom, boom. And I'm going to skin the fish as well. And here, all you got to do is hold it with a towel, wiggle the skin. Knife doesn't really need to do anything, just, just keep it down on the board, really firm. And that's it. Boom. Oh, it's just skinned. And I do like to go cut, you know, the tail off. And then, so I have this perfect starting edge, so I can get right under there, right under that meat. And now I have something to hold on to there. Hold on to it, wiggle the meat, or wiggle the skin, sorry. Boom. Yeah, get it perfectly. I am just going to cut out the pin bones here goes all the way back here because I'm just feeling it with my fingers if I really wanted to I could just use my tweezers and do this you just feel for the pin bones where they are it's always going to start at that front the very the bottom don't forget about these guys here two Three, there's one all the way down here too. It takes a little more time and effort, but in the end, you get the most meat out of it since you're not cutting anything away. If the fish is super fresh, it's gonna be harder to take out. So if you like just caught it the day of, trying to remove the pin bones is kind of difficult. But if you let it sit a day or two, it gets easier. Allows the meat to relax. Working in restaurants is not all glamorous. It's a lot of this kind of stuff. A lot of small things that you just that are really meticulous. Really just takes time what you have to do if you want to end up with the perfect dish. This guy's got a lot of pin bones. There we go. Now that is boneless. And these are both boneless, but you can see one I cut out, one I pulled pin bones out. Looks much nicer. And there's this little bloody piece I'll take cut off. In order to have the crispiest fried fish, you want to pull out some of that moisture from the fish. And so I'm gonna salt cure it. And that just means just using salt to pull out some of that excess water. Alright, there you go, a little salt on the bottom of the plate. Fish goes on. Salt right on top, about medium amount of salt, not too much, and we'll let that sit for about 20 minutes, just on in the fridge, and that'll pull out a lot of moisture. We'll end up with a nice crispy fish afterwards. Now we'll make our batter. We're gonna do beer batter. We'll keep it quite simple. We'll do a cup of flour and about a quarter cup of cornstarch. Extra little crispiness with the cornstarch and then just season it with some salt 
and pepper as well. I have some double IPA. Finally, I found some strong beer. The IPAs in New Zealand are kind of on the weak side, like 5%, a lot of them. Well, I found a double IPA that's uh, 8%. Choose whatever beer you like, your favorite beer. And I got some local stuff here. And we'll just add about, uh, we'll start with that much. Less than half the can. Get that mix. Obviously, we need more. It smells really good. It smells like a nice IPA. That should be pretty good right there. Slightly thick. Not too runny. It's a little runny. Alright, I just rinsed off the salt. I'm gonna do a nice pad dry, make sure it's Nice and dry. A little bit of cornstarch right on the fish. And then we'll take it to our batter. Right into our batter. And into the hot oil. All right, we'll just check the heat. Oh yeah, that's perfect temperature. Now we'll just drop the fish in. Oh, did not go as planned. Drop it in and lightly. Seems like it needs a little bit more batter, you can just drop a little on top. Once it develops a little crust on the bottom, it should be able to move it off of it. There we go, just like that. And obviously we're gonna have to flip this because this pan is too small. And uh, not enough oil. And I'm just gonna do a flip right now. Done here. There you go. Super crispy. Always when you fry fish, you end up with leftover batter, right? So what do you do with this? We're gonna make the scallion pancakes with this batter. Just gonna add a couple things. I wanna water it down a little bit first. Just want it a little more runny. And then I got these beautiful scallions from a roadside veggie stand. Gonna cut these up, toss them in, and also add a little bit of hondashi and soy sauce. There we go. And now, ready to go back on the stove. That's just the same oil we fried the fish in. Make sure the pan's nice and hot.
it needs a little more batter, you just pour a little on top. Throw some red peppers on there. We'll go about four minutes on one side, flip it over. Again, same thing, about four minutes on the other side. I'm gonna make a sauce for this. Go with soy sauce, a little vinegar, sesame oil, and I'm feeling like an egg yolk. It's gonna be really good in this. So I will, oops, separate an egg yolk, and then we'll finish it off with some chopped sesame seeds here. There you go. All right, and the pancake should be done now. Make sure it's just not stuck to the bottom. Take a plate. Oh, there it is. Scallion pancakes. Mmm, <laughs> yum. Hey, now we just plate. I'm gonna put that fish right on top of there and just garnish with some scallions. There it is. Beer battered blue cod with Korean scallion pancakes. Almost forgot about a little bit of kimchi here. Now it's complete. All right, here it is. Let's taste our blue cod. Pretty interested in how this turned out. I'm gonna go with the blue cod first, just by itself. Mm, crispy. Ooh, that's a really good fish. It's actually very different than lean cod. What do you think? Crispy, very flaky. That's really good. All right, now I was thinking of doing it like this. So one of the other reasons I made the scallion pancake. Just cut a bit of that. Put a little bit of kimchi on there. And then we can do a little Korean pancake wrap with the blue cod, something like that. With the sauce. Let's see how that is. The meat just breaks apart. Really tender flesh. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> mm. The cream pancakes are good too. It's nice and chewy. Of course, another sauce that would be great to kelp chili crisp. The kelp chili crisp, sandwich all that up. That looks so good. I forgot to drink my beer. Cheers. Hey, that's tasty. Come by. Cheers, guys. Mm. I like this pancake. I like the pancake. Mm -hmm. The pancake was good. Even with that beer batter, mm -hmm. IPA beer batter came out good. Yeah, well, it's kind of chewy, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of like a mochi. Yeah, kind of chewy. You didn't put any rice flour though, right? No. Mm. Mm. Perfectly delicate, like crab meat actually. Mm. Really good. Sauce this up. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good fish. Yeah, highly recommend it. <clears throat> and that is a great dish, perfect way to use up that batter. Anyways, still on the hunt for the kingfish. I was really hoping to get it done at that spot. Man, that current was ripping, but fish weren't around. I don't think. Didn't see any big fish action on the surface. There was plenty of bait, plenty of current. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we couldn't get it done. Still on the chase. Still on the hunt. 
Hopefully, we'll get it. We'll get them soon. It's just in time. In time. I just have to be a little bit more patient, I guess. <laughs> Dang, but that kayak one sucked so bad. Yeah, no, uh, uh, no gaff. No gaff. But I just bought a gaff, so you ain't gonna slip. <laughs> catch me slipping again. But uh, I know you guys are probably saying you should always have a net, blah blah blah, all this stuff. But one thing you gotta understand is that we live in a van, a small <laughs> one too. So it's stuff that the kayak, obviously borrowed it and then didn't have a net with us. That's how it goes. You get them when you least expect it. Thanks for watching another one. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, regardless of um, our lack of kingfish we're coming from. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.